Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Distilled. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and today I'll be showing you the first two out of seven overall rounds. Now, before I go into that, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support this channel and gain access to a wide variety of exclusive perks, then please go to patreon.com slash John Gets Games. Some of those include the dozens of opinions episodes that I put out, where I talk about the things I like and don't like about all the games that I'm playing recently, and also up as my opinions change as I continue to play them. You can also gain access to some videos early and advertisement free, and get access to an exclusive podcast feed where you can hear audio versions of all of the vlogs that I make, including those opinions episodes. Now, the final thing I'd like to ask is if while you're watching this video, some part of this game jumps out to you as particularly interesting, then please comment about that down below because I love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. In it, each player has just inherited a distillery, and over the course of seven rounds, we are going to be distilling liquor in order to gain money as well as spirit points. During each one of the game's rounds, we will have a market phase where players can spend money in order to upgrade their distillery, purchase ingredients or items, and they can then move into the distilling phase where they will use yeast, sugars, and water in order to distill their spirits. During the distilling process, alcohol cards will be added, then two cards will be randomly removed, and at that point we'll use the remaining cards to see what kind of spirit we've distilled. Each player has a checklist over here, which shows all of the various types of recipes that we can fulfill. We can always make moonshine or vodka, and then all of the other ones are dependent on this recipe sheet that can be different from one game to the next. Now you can only distill using these recipes once you've learned them, which you usually do by paying for it. And for most players, they'll start the game not knowing any of these. Once the spirit has been distilled, we can bottle it up and then potentially sell it immediately to get spirit points as well as money, or we could put it into a wooden barrel and age it for multiple rounds that add various flavors, which will increase the money and spirit points we get for that spirit when we sell it. Now, as I said, we're going to go through seven rounds, and at the end of that, whoever has the most spirit points will win, and we will gain spirit points not only for selling our spirits, but also by receiving spirit awards, as well as by completing our private distillery goals, in addition to a number of other ways that we can gain those spirit points. Now, there is certainly more going on to this game than what I've talked about so far, and don't worry, I'll explain how each one of these things works in detail while we're actually playing the game. Speaking of that, I think now is a good time for us to start the game. And for today's tutorial, we are going to play as Jiang Jina. I do want to point out that during setup, each player received two distiller cards, and we chose one of them, and these specify not only our starting money and ingredients, but as well as a special effect, signature recipe, and signature ingredient. Now, as I explained during the overview, the game is going to take place over seven rounds, and we are now beginning the first round of the game. Now, the very first thing that happens is all start of round effects are performed for each of the players going in order. We are going to be the starting player because we have this token here, but we don't have any start of turn effects. Down here, the blue player is Nathan Migizi, and they also don't have any start of turn effects, but the yellow player, who is Jacqueline Booker, does. These effects can show up on distillers as well as on upgrades, and they always have this icon here. Now, for the yellow player, that says that at the start of every round of the game, they will add a basic water or yeast card to their pantry. Their pantry is right here, and as you can see, they started with a yeast card, and now they can take another yeast or a water. Now, they've decided to take the water. As you can see, this is the basic market with the basic cards. We'll explain these in more detail, and specifically the yeast and water, because they have purchase effects that happen when they are purchased, but you do not perform these purchase effects when you gain them in any other way, just like this for the yellow player. So they can add this water into their pantry, and that's finished up every one of the player's start of round effects. This means we can now move into the first out of four phases that happen within each round of the game. Now, this is the market phase, and it is going to happen in turn order. As I mentioned before, we are the starting player, so we can now perform the first market phase turn of the game. Now, the way these turns work is we can spend our money in order to buy one card, either from the premium market up here or from the basic market down there, or we could spend our money to learn a new recipe, which is going to be a bronze, silver, or gold type, or we could pass. 
Once we pass, we are not allowed to take any more turns for the rest of this phase, and we are going to keep taking turns going clockwise around the table until every player has passed. Now, on each one of our turns, we can do one of these things, so we might end up purchasing multiple cards during the same market phase. We just have to buy one of them on each turn before our opponents have a chance to go. Now, at the start of the game, we only have one money, and we know that because on the back of our distiller card, it shows that one money symbol here. Now, that's not a lot. However, we also have an ongoing benefit that's shown at the bottom of our card, and it says once per market phase, we can discount one ingredient by two money. Now, again, we currently have one, but we effectively have three money for the purpose of purchasing an ingredient. Now, as I mentioned before, we have a basic market down here and a premium market up there. And in the premium market, this is the ingredient row. So we can purchase any of these at a two money discount. And down here on the basic market, the first five items are listed as ingredients. The cost to purchase any card is the number listed in the bottom right corner. As you can see, this Anis costs three money normally, but again, we have a two money discount. So we can purchase this for one money, and I think that's what we want to do. So we're gonna spend this money back to the bank and take this. And again, we can only use this special discount once per market phase. So if we buy any more ingredients, we will have to pay the full price. Now, every time a card is taken from the premium market, we slide all the rest of the cards in that row over and then reveal new cards from the top of the deck to fill that row in. And then every time we acquire a new ingredient, we can either put it into our pantry or into our washback. Now, I'll describe how the washback works in more detail later on, but all of the cards that are placed over here will be used for distilling during the current round. So if you think you're going to be distilling with this card, you can just put it over here right away, or you can always just put it over there and then put it into the washback later on. Well, that's finished our turn because we did purchase a card. This means play will move clockwise over here to the blue player. And for them, their distiller starts the game with a whopping four money. They've decided to spend all of that right away in order to take an upgrade. All of these are upgrades and they come in two types, specialists and equipment. The upgrade they want is this specialist, specifically that is a farmer. And as you can see, that costs them four money. As soon as they take this, the rest will slide over and then we'll reveal another upgrade card. After that, they must place their upgrade onto their distillery board. As you can see, there are three spots with that upgrade icon, when that means players can hold up to three upgrades at any point. If they have three upgrades, they can get another, they'll just have to discard one of their previously acquired upgrades in order to make room for it. It's worth noting that whenever players have to discard any premium card, they put it over here onto the truck. This is the spot for the discarded premium upgrades, premium ingredients, and premium items. If we ever run out of cards in the draw decks for these, in that moment we will shuffle up the discard pile and create a new pile for that row. Well, this has finished the blue player's turn, and before we move on, I do want to point out that the specialist ability down here says they now have a start of round effect that lets them add a basic grain sugar card into their pantry. Now, I do want to point out that the abilities on upgrades come into effect immediately, but if it has a start of round effect, that only will happen during the start of the next round. If instead they had acquired the Architect Specialist, they would have gained the effect saying once per market phase, they can discount one distillery upgrade by two, and if they had taken this, they could use that effect immediately during the same market phase. Well, blue is done, so that means the yellow player can go. Now, they started the game with two money, and they've decided for their turn to purchase a basic market item. Now, as you can see, there is stacks of these various ingredients, as well as items over here, and within every stack, each of these cards is the same. These cards also have prices on them, ranging from zero up to four. Now, as I mentioned before, the first five items are ingredients, and the last two are items. Now, they could purchase any of these ingredients. They vary from zero to two, and it looks like they want to buy another yeast. Now, yeast costs zero money, as you can see, and on top of that, it has a special effect that says when purchased, they immediately gain one money from the supply, and this card cannot be traded with the basic market. I'll explain how trading works later on. For now, they gain one money, which means they now have three money total, Next up, they can add this into their pantry, although whenever you purchase a basic card during the market phase, it's advised to put that off to the side. The reason for that is because you can only purchase at most two cards from the basic market, and this helps you track how many you've purchased within this specific market phase. We can see this restriction is also printed over here on the basic market board, saying you can purchase up to two cards per player per round. Well, yellow is done, which means it's time for us to go again, and currently we have zero money. This means we could pass if we want to, but then we can't do anything else in this market phase, and we would not be able to distill later on in the round. 
The reason for that is because we currently don't have any yeast or alcohol cards that we could use in the place of yeast. I'll explain how alcohol works later on when we're in the distilling phase. So I think we need yeast, and as we just saw, every time you purchase yeast, it costs zero money, and in fact, it gets you one money back. Now, this is a basic market card, so we'll put it over here to remind ourselves we can only take one more from this during the current phase, and then of course, we gain one money that we can spend later on during this phase. We are done, so now the blue player can go. As you can see, they began the game with a yeast, but they don't currently have any water, and you also must have water or alcohol down here during the distilling phase in order to actually make spirits. With this in mind, they've decided to spend their turn taking a water card from the basic market. Now this also has a purchase effect. It says when purchased, you may reveal the top card of any market deck to all players. That player may purchase it or return it to the bottom of that deck. Now, once again, the market decks are over here with upgrade, ingredient, and item cards, and this can be a nice way to get some extra variety with the cards that you're buying. Although right now, I think the blue player is going to pass on this effect because they currently don't have any money to spend. So they can place this over here, again off to the side, because this is a basic card, and they can use that to track how many of these basic cards they purchased during this market phase. That's finished the blue player's turn, which means yellow can go again and they currently have three money. Now, they've decided to spend their turn purchasing an item. Inside this item deck, there are bottles as well as barrels of various types, and they've decided to buy this wrapped bottle here. As you can see, that will cost them three money, so they can return all three of this to the bank. Then they can take this bottle, and then, of course, refresh this market by drawing a new card from the top of the deck. It looks like that is another different type of wooden barrel. Next up, they can place this bottle into their storeroom. At the start of the game, all players begin with a basic bottle and metal barrel that's in their storeroom, and this is where you keep all of your items. Now, once again, there are ingredients and items, with each of them being stored in their own areas of each player's distillery board. Now, bottles are important when it comes to selling spirits, and I'll explain why the yellow player spent money on this when we get to that part of the tutorial. All right, yellow is done, which means we can go again. And I think let's take another yeast. We already have the water that we need to distill in this round. And by taking another yeast, we gain one more money, which brings us up to two. Now that is going to be an important amount of money in order for us to gain a new recipe. And we'll do that on our next turn. So I'll explain how that works when we get there. Of course, this is the second card we purchased from the basic market, which means we cannot purchase any more cards from the basic market for the rest of this market phase. So we are done, which means the blue player can go. They currently have no money, and they've only taken one card from the basic market, and this means they could take one more before the end of this market phase. They could, of course, take yeast or water like we've seen already, but they've decided instead to take some mixed grains. This also costs zero money, which is good, considering blue currently does not have any money, and then they can take this card. This is a basic grain sugar, and it will be vital for them in order to distill in this current round of the game. This is the second basic market card they've taken during this phase, so that means they can't take any more during the phase. They are done with their turn, which means the yellow player can go now. They could take one more card from the basic market if they want. And just like the blue player, they've decided to take some mixed grains because they are free, and yellow also does not have any money. With yellow done, that means it's our turn again, and we currently have two money. Now let's focus over here specifically on our recipe list. Now, as you can see, this is made up of a board that has some things printed on it, as well as this recipe card. And each time you play the game, you will select a specific type of recipe, and then all players will get that recipe card that they will slide into their board. Now, this board shows us the recipes that we have for distilling spirits. We always have the ability to distill moonshine or vodka, as well as our signature recipe that is associated with this token that matches up with our master distiller. Now, we know we have access to these because of these check marks, and that means we do not have access to any of these at the beginning of the game. Now, I would like to make cachaça in this first round of the game, and that means we need to learn the recipe. As you can see, these recipes are split into bronze, silver, and gold types. And at the top of our checklist board, we have prices associated with each of those types of recipes. The bronze costs two money, silver costs four, and gold costs six. Now that is the money that we have to spend to learn the recipe, and we only have to do this once per game per recipe. As I said, I would like to distill cachaça, and that means we have to learn it, and it is a bronze type. That means it's going to cost us two money, so we can spend these two money to the bank and then take a bronze token and place it next to the cachaça. That counts as a check mark, so that means for the rest of the game, this is an option for us to distill during the distilling phase of each round. 
Now, just because we have this recipe and meet all of the requirements for it does not mean we will successfully distill cachaça. We could end up making vodka or moonshine instead, and I'll explain how that works once we get into the distilling phase. Well, that's finished our turn, and that means Blue can go, and they've decided to pass. They have no money, and they can't take any more basic market cards, so that makes sense. This means they will not take any more turns during this market phase, and now Yellow can go, and they've decided to also pass for the same reasons. That means it's back to us rather quickly, and I think we will pass now for the same exact reasons as our opponents. We obviously have no money, and we can't take any more basic market cards. This means we can all add these market cards to our pantries because we no longer need to track them since the phase is coming to a close. The final thing that we do in the market phase is clean up the premium market. Specifically, the way this works is we will discard the rightmost card on each of these rows and then refresh the market. And if it's a two-player game, you discard the two rightmost cards in each of the rows. Now, these discarded cards go over here onto the truck and they are not accessible now unless you gain a special effect that lets you take a card from the truck, and I'll explain how we do that later on. Next up, we can slide all of these over and then refill the rest of these slots in. With the market phase over, it's now time for the distill phase, and all players will act at the same time during this phase. That being said, for this tutorial, I'll show each of the players doing their distilling phase one after another. But remember, when playing with other people around the table, you can all act at the same time during this phase to speed up the game. Now, the very first thing we can do during this phase is potentially trade one ingredient or item from our distillery board in order to gain one basic ingredient from the supply. The basic ingredient that you get must be of equal or lesser value. And as I mentioned before, some of these cards say you cannot trade them. For example, both of our starting equipment, it says cannot be traded. And the same thing can be said for the yeast cards that we have, but not for the others. So if we wanted to, we could trade this anise for any basic ingredient of value three or less. And that would make sense if our plan had to change in the middle of our market phase, but I think we're going to keep going and not perform this one optional trade. Next up, we have to add our ingredients into the washback. Now, the washback is a container where yeast, sugars, and water are going to ferment before distillation. And in real life, these giant barrels can sometimes be over 20 feet deep. Now, as you can see in the washback area of the board, we have icons. This is for yeast, then this is for the three different types of sugar with grains, fruits, and plants, and then down here for water. Now, in order to distill anything, we must have at least one card in each of these three spots. So we can look at our ingredients, and this is a sugar, so we can put it there. The water will go there, and then the yeast can go there. By doing this, we have the minimum requirements in order to distill a spirit. Now we can put all excess into the pantry, or we could add more into the washback if we think that's a good idea. Now I think it is a good idea for us. Let's add this second yeast over here. Now I do want to mention that it's possible later on in the game that we will also have alcohol cards in our pantry. Alcohol cards can be added to the water or yeast part of the washback, which means if we had no yeast, but we did have an alcohol, we could put that over there, and we still have the minimum requirements in order to distill a spirit. Now, I'll explain how alcohol might make its way into our pantry later on in the tutorial. For now, we know there's two yeast up here. After adding ingredients, if we have at least one card in all three of these sections, we can now start distilling, and the way this works is we are going to draw an alcohol card from the top of the deck for every sugar that is in the washback. Now, all of the alcohol cards look the same. There's a rather large deck of them off to the side, and we have just one sugar in our washback, so we'll add one alcohol onto it. Again, if we had more sugars, then we would add more alcohol cards into the washback. At this point, it's finally time to distill the spirit. The way this works is we take all of the cards in the washback and we shuffle them up. After doing that, we now need to remove the top card from the stack, and this is the head. Now, in real life, when you're distilling alcohol, the head is the first parts of the liquid that comes out of the still, and these are lighter alcohols and are potentially poisonous, which means they need to be cut out. In addition to taking the top card, we also have to take the bottom card, and this is the tail of the distillation. Now, the tail end is most likely to contain unpleasant flavors, so it makes sense to remove that from the spirit. After that, both of these cards that were taken off are going to be added back into the pantry, and that's because in real life when you are distilling, you use both the heads and the tails for distilling future batches. 
So what this means is every time you distill, two random cards will be removed, and they will go back over here, which means they are not lost. In fact, having alcohol makes us flexible for the next round. We can put this into the water or the yeast part of the washback in order to distill. In fact, we have a yeast as well. So in the next round, we could do this and just focus our market phase on trying to get some more sugars. So not having these in our current spirit is not that big of a deal. But of course, if sugars are randomly taken out, that could absolutely affect the type of spirit that we end up distilling. At this point, we can now reveal all of the remaining cards in the stack, and now we have to add a barrel. Now, barrels are items, and if you remember from before, we always start with a metal barrel in our storeroom. So we can add this metal barrel, and that's what we used to distill this spirit. Next up, we can come back to our recipe list and see which type of spirit we just distilled. Now, the spirit has a metal barrel, one water, one yeast, and one plant sugar. Now let's focus on the recipe list. In order to make moonshine, we have to have a metal barrel. This can't be aged, and there can't be any sugars in the spirit. Now, I haven't talked about aging just yet, and I will go into that in more detail later on, but a spirit that was just created in this phase is not considered to be aged. So we have the metal barrel, and it's not aged, but there is a plant sugar, which means we did not make moonshine. Next up, we can look to vodka. Now, this also can't be aged, and it also needs a metal barrel, and it needs to have any number of any type of plant sugar. We do have one plant sugar, so that means this could be vodka. Now, in addition to these that are available every game, we paid money to learn the cachaça recipe. Now, that says we cannot have any grain or fruit type sugars in the spirit, and we must have at least one plant sugar in the spirit. Also, this must be a metal barrel and not be aged. Over here, we have a plant type which matches that, and we don't have any fruit or grain types, which means we have indeed met the requirement to distill cachaça. Once again, if this anise had been in the head or tail of the spirit, then obviously we would not have the requirements we need to distill cachaça, but this would be in our pantry so we could try it again in the next round, and obviously in this case, we would have distilled moonshine. Thankfully, that didn't happen for us though, and I do think that we want to make cachaça. Now, as you can see, the rewards for selling these are listed on the right side, and this glass with laurel leaves around it are spirit points. This other icon is money that you gain. So that means if we distilled vodka and sold it, we get two spirit points and one money, whereas the cachaça gives us four spirit points and no money. If we desperately needed that one money, then maybe we'd make vodka right now, but I think we still want to make cachaça. With the distilled spirit decided, it's now time for us to take a matching spirit token. With that in mind, let's focus over here. Now we have Moonshine and Vodka tokens, and again, these are in every game. And then we have all of these other spirit tokens that match up with the spirits that we have on our recipe sheet. As you can see, there are twice as many Moonshine and Vodka tokens as there are the rest of these types. And whenever you distill one of these spirits, you take the associated token. We just made Cachaça so we can take that token, and I do want to mention that if all of these tokens were gone, we could still distill Cachaça, we just wouldn't get this Spirit token. Spirit tokens are good for immediate benefits as well as potential endgame scoring. Let's focus back over here, and now what we can do is simply place our Spirit off to the side, and then put this token on top of it. I do want to point out that you can only distill at most one spirit during each phase, even if you had enough ingredients in the washback to complete multiple spirits on the recipe list. Now that's finished our distill phase, and of course all players are doing this simultaneously, but now let's take a look and see how the blue player's distilling goes. Now they added some mixed grains for their sugar, then they have water and yeast. They have at least one card in each type, so that means they will distill. They have a single sugar, so they'll add a single alcohol. Then they can shuffle all of these cards together. After shuffling, it looks like the head is water and the tail, oh, it is their mixed grains. So that means this is the spirit that they just made with yeast and alcohol. Next up, they can look over at their recipe list, and with this, the only thing they can make is moonshine. Once again, that requires a metal barrel, which players will always have, and they only make the moonshine if there are no sugars in the spirit. Now, before we move on, I do want to again point out that every player also has access to their signature recipe. We didn't even look at ours, and that's because we were nowhere near being able to complete it. Ours required three or more grain-type sugars, and then no plant or fruit-based sugars, and at least one of those sugars must specifically be rice. 
Now, this also needs a metal barrel, and it cannot be aged, and it makes seven spirit points and gains you one extra money when sold. Each of these signature recipes can only be made once per game, and you can see that with this 1x token right down here. Now, the uh, blue player certainly cannot complete their signature recipe, but I do want to point out that they have a recipe cube down here for whiskey. That was part of the asymmetric effect for Nathan McGeezy. As you can see, they start the game with a free silver recipe cube on whiskey, and they also get to sell their aged spirits for one extra money. We'll talk about aging spirits more in the future, and that's why this is here. That's effectively like them gaining four extra money, because that's how much it would cost to learn whiskey. Now, they would have loved to make whiskey in this first round. However, that requires two or more grain-type sugars, and then no plant or fruit-based sugars, and this requires a wooden barrel. Currently, they only have a metal barrel, and with the money they had, they decided to invest in an upgrade instead of trying to make whiskey in this first round. It's likely they're going to try to make it in the next round. As you can see, this farmer is going to make one basic grain card at the start of each round, and that is what you need to make whiskey. So they're setting themselves up for some more long-term whiskey distillation. For now, though, they're just making moonshine. So they can take a moonshine token. Before I move on, I do want to point out that the top of these tokens also gives you a helpful reminder for the things that these specific spirits need in order to be distilled. Well, that's blue done, and then of course at the same time, yellow was also distilling. And theirs looks a whole lot like the blue players. They've got the mixed grains, the yeast, and the water, although they do have another yeast. They could add this in, but they've decided they're okay holding on to it for the next round. This means they are much more likely to make moonshine instead of vodka, and they're fine with that. Next up, they have one sugar, so they will add a single alcohol, and then they will shuffle all of these up. And then the head is alcohol, and the tail is water. So it looks like they have a grain sugar and a yeast left over. They, of course, have to add on a barrel to that, and they'll use their metal one. And then we can see that they have distilled vodka because they have at least one plant sugar, and they have that metal barrel, and this is not aged. So they'll take the vodka token from the supply and put it on top of that spirit. Well, the distill phase is over, so now we can move into the selling phase. Much like the market phase earlier on, the selling phase happens in turn order, and it's going to start with us. On each player's turn during the sell phase, we can sell up to one spirit that we have, and then we'll move on in clockwise order. So you may end up selling more than one spirit in the phase, but you have to wait until the turn comes back around to you. Now again, we are going to start, and we have one spirit over here. Let's go ahead and focus in. Now, we must sell this during the current sell phase, and we know that because the metal barrel that we used has this no aging symbol. Now, each spirit that we have must be either sold or aged, and since we can't age this one, we have to sell it. So, let's go ahead and sell our cachaça. The way this works is we have to splay the entire stack out so that we can see any rewards on the left side. And then we have to add to that a bottle. This is going to come from our storeroom, and we all start with a basic glass bottle, and that's the only one we have, so we'll have to add that one on there and use that for our cachaça. Now we can count up the sell value by adding up all of these money numbers in the top left corner on the cards. It looks like we have four over here, and then we potentially add to that any money showing up over here on the recipe list. For cachaça, though, there is no extra money. So that's four money total, and we can gain that from the supply, and we will certainly be using that in the next round. After that, we now need to add up the spirit points. We can start over here at the recipe, and we know that Kashasa will get us four spirit points. And then when we come back over here, in the bottom left corner, the anise does have a spirit point on there. So we add that to the four we already have, which brings us up to five. In addition to those, we also have the possibility of gaining extra spirit points based off of upgrades that we have, our distiller's special effect, as well as flavors if we had aged that spirit. Now, it looks like we're not going to get any bonuses for those things, and I'll explain the details of aging spirits later on. Before we move from here, though, I do want to point out that we didn't have any alcohol cards in our spirit. We had one alcohol card total, and it was removed. And the overall effect of that is our spirit was not as alcoholic, and that means we made less money. If that had been in the spirit, we would have gained extra money for it. So that means if you add more sugars into the washback, you'll add more alcohol into the overall spirit, and that spirit will sell for a higher value later on because it is more alcoholic and more premium. So overall, our Kashasa gave us 4 plus 1 or 5 points, and we are the red player, so we can move our token onto the 5 spirit spot on this board. 
Next up, we can take the Spirit Token and place it onto an empty bonus spot along the top of our distillery board. Remember what I said before, that if you distill something and there are no more of these tokens, you still successfully distill it, but you don't take that token. And if you don't have the token, you won't gain access to this bonus, but you will gain access to everything else associated with that recipe. So let's go ahead and focus in a little bit more because we now get to take one of these. And again, we can only do each one of these once per game. Now, this first one says we can take five money or two spirit points. The second one says we can move our signature ingredient into our pantry, or we could take two spirit points. Now, I haven't talked about this before, but off to the side during setup, we placed this Seneca rice. That is the signature ingredient for our distiller. And the only way to gain access to this is by taking this bonus right over here. Now, the reason this could be important is because our signature recipe requires us to have rice. So this would help us get to that requirement. In addition to that, this Seneca rice pays out two money when it's in a spirit, and it also pays out four spirit points. On top of that, all of these signature ingredients have the following effect. It says, if removed from the spirit stack during the distill phase, you may return it to the spirit you just distilled. That card is pretty good, but let's move on and see what other benefits we could get. This one here says we could discard one card from our pantry to take any one card from the truck, or we could take two spirit points. I mentioned before that we do have the possibility of taking cards from the truck, and this is how we do that. If there are multiple cards within a stack, we can freely look at that entire stack and take any one of our choice using this effect. Moving on, this would let us take a free ingredient from the premium or basic market, or take two spirit points. And when we take that card, we then immediately refill the market if we took a premium ingredient. After that, this one would let us get a free recipe. Now that could be bronze, silver, or gold, which means that could save us a bunch of money in order to unlock a recipe that we really want, or we could take two spirit points. After that, this lets us gain a free item in much the same way we could gain a free ingredient from over here, or again, we could take two spirit points. And lastly, this one would let us take a free upgrade card from the market, again, just like these other two bonuses we saw, or gain two spirit points. Out of all of these options, I think I like this one. Let's gain a free upgrade from the premium market. These are the four options. Currently, there are three specialists and one equipment. Let's take a look at all these options to see which one we should grab. Over here, we have a tour guide, and their effect is simple. We would gain one money at the start of every round of the game. If we took this right now, that would end up activating six times over the course of the game. So that's effectively like getting six money, which is nice. Then this Cooper says once per market phase, we can discount one barrel that we purchase by up to two money. Barrels are important for aging our spirits, and when you age a spirit, you can get a lot more spirit points for it when you ultimately sell it. The other two options are the Master Blender and this Orchard. Now the Master Blender says during the sell phase, we would gain one spirit point when selling a spirit if we already have a spirit label of the same region. Now I haven't talked about regions just yet, but every spirit as well as each one of the distillers has a region icon on it. This region is for the Americas, and overall there are three regions with the Americas, Europe as the next, and then Asia and Oceania as the third. Now we already have a Kashasa, which is associated with the Americas. And if we had the Master Blender and we took another token associated with the Americas, then we would get an extra spirit point, which is pretty nice. Having the most spirit points is how we win the game. Now, as you can see, there's a variety of region icons out here. And then the Moonshine and the Vodka have this symbol right here. Now, that means it is going to be from the region of your master distiller, and for us, that is Asia and Oceania. So unfortunately, these would not necessarily match up, although if we had that master blender and we took more than one of these, then we would start to get that benefit. There are two other Asia and Oceania recipes out here with the soju and the baiju, and if we had that master blender, that would definitely alter our incentives for which spirit we distilled. Finally, there is this orchard, and that says at the start of each round, we would gain one basic fruit sugar from the supply, and those usually cost two money in order to take. Honestly, all of these seem pretty great, and on top of that, they all have an end game spirit points scoring condition. The tour guide says at the end of the game, they can convert their money into spirit points at a rate of three to one instead of the normal five to one. And the cooper says they would gain one spirit point for each barrel type represented in their spirit labels. The Master Blender will give two spirit points for every two identical spirit labels. And lastly, the Orchard would give one spirit point for every two of your Europe spirit labels.
Now, I like all of these options, but this one potentially gets us the most points, and that is how we win the game. So I think we're going to take the Master Blender and try to get multiple tokens from the same region. Of course, we then slide these down, and then a new one comes out. This is the Coffee Still. That is an equipment type upgrade. It only gets you one spirit point at the end of the game, but there's no condition for it. And it says once per distill phase, you may return all removed cards, reshuffle and remove the top and bottom cards again, essentially giving you a second shot if you didn't like the random cards that were taken the first time. Now we can add the Master Blender into an empty upgrade spot on our board. And at this point, if we used either our glass bottle or our metal barrel in this spirit, we have to then add them back into our storeroom. We never get rid of these, which means we will always have this metal barrel and that glass bottle in every single round of the game. Now, I do want to point out that if we had sold this spirit using a premium bottle instead of our basic glass bottle, then we'd actually set it off to the side to potentially gain us spirit points at the end of the game, and I'll explain how that works later on in the tutorial. Finally, we have to return the rest of the cards to their associated spots. These basic cards go back to the basic market, and the premium cards go into the associated discard spot on the truck. Well, that's finished our selling turn, and now the blue player can sell. In fact, they must, because just like us, this cannot be aged. They, of course, have to add a glass bottle, and then the spirit that they made is Moonshine. So that means they will gain two money plus three more, so that is five money total. And then they will gain a single spirit point. There are no other spirit points on here, and they don't have any other benefits that would give them spirit points for this spirit. So they have one point. After this, they can place their moonshine token onto an empty reward, and they've decided to take a free item. These are their options, and they've decided to take the X Bourbon Hogshead that normally costs seven money. So that's a pretty good grab for them, considering they don't have to pay any money at all for this. Then they can slide this over. And then, of course, add that barrel into their storeroom. Once again, they are definitely trying to get whiskey up and running, and it looks like this is probably part of that endeavor. After that, they can return their glass bottle and metal barrel to their storeroom, and then the alcohol and yeast can be returned to the supplies. Finally, we have the yellow player, and for their vodka, they have to add a bottle, and they actually have two different options. That's because they bought this premium wrapped bottle during the market phase, and that is the bottle they've decided to use instead of their basic glass bottle. As I mentioned before, they made vodka, so that is going to get them one money, and then looking at the rest of the spirit, they have two more money showing, so that is three money total. That can be added to their supply, and then for the spirit points, we can see the vodka will get them two, and then we can see that this wrapped bottle is going to give them a variable amount. When we focus in, that says when they sell, they'll gain two extra spirit points, and if they're selling a America's spirit, they will gain three spirit points instead. As I mentioned before, they distilled vodka, and that has the location symbol that matches up with their master distiller. Jacqueline Booker is indeed from the Americas, which means this is an Americas-style vodka, and that means the wrapped bottle will get them three extra spirit. So, all told, they are going to gain three plus two or five spirit for this vodka. That means they're tied with us. Next up, the yellow player needs to select one of these bonuses, and they've decided to take their signature ingredient into their pantry. That is dent corn, which is a grain sugar type. So that'll go into their pantry. After that, it's now time for them to remove the barrel and bottles. And they did use their starting metal barrel, so that'll go into their storeroom. But they did not use their starting bottle. Now, whenever you use a premium bottle, you do not return it to the discard pile. Instead, you put it off to the side as a showcase for the different types of bottles you have sold your spirits in. Players won't be able to use these bottles in their collection for the rest of the game. However, once we get to end game scoring, they will potentially score extra spirit points based off of the regions that are associated with the bottles in their collection. I'll explain how that works in more detail later on. The other cards in that spirit can be returned to the supply. And that's finished Yellow's turn, which means now we could go. However, we don't have any more spirits to sell. In fact, none of the players do. So we will pass, and once you pass, you cannot take any more turns during this phase. And of course, all of the players will pass. That means the sell phase is over, and we can now go into the age phase. Now, the age phase is where we can take spirits in clay or wooden barrels and age them in our warehouses. 
although at this point, no player has any of those to put into their warehouse. Now, I strongly suspect we'll see that in the next round of the game, so I'll put off talking about how aging works in detail until we actually see somebody do it. So, nothing happens in the aging phase, and we've now reached the end of round step. The first thing that we do here is check to see if any players have gained any spirit awards. During setup, we randomly placed a number of these equal to the player count plus one face up on the table. Each of these has a condition, and we only check it at this point in the round. Now, if one or more players meet that condition, they will score spirit points. If it's just one player, they'll get the points listed, and if it's multiple players, then you divide those points by all the players who meet the condition, and then round up. These are the four that we have in today's tutorial. And the first one is double sale. That would give five spirit points if a player sells two spirits in one round. Obviously, nobody did that. We all sold one. So now we can move on to high class. That says if you sell a spirit worth 12 or more spirit points, then you get five more points for achieving this award. But the most spirit points anybody got in this round was five. So nobody achieved this one. Moving down, we have Up With The Sun. That says if you collect three of the Asia and Oceana spirit labels, you'll gain seven spirit points. And it specifically says labels with this icon that match up with your distiller do not count for this award. Finally, there is Perfect Pair. That says if you sell a non-vodka spirit using a bottle from the same region, then you get five spirit points. Once an award has been achieved, we will flip it over and then it won't be available to anyone for the rest of the game. Obviously, nobody completed any of these in the first round, though. Next up, every player who did not sell any spirits in the current round have the option of holding a tasting. The way this works is they can spend up to four of their spirit points and gain one money for every spirit point that they spend. Obviously, if you are at zero spirit points, you cannot spend any. Every player sold at least one spirit in this round, though, so nobody can hold a tasting. So we can now move the round marker forward, which means we are going to be entering the second round of the game. Now, I do want to point out this icon here. Now, when we move from the third to the fourth round, before we actually get to this point, all players will have to discard one of their distillery goals. During setup, all players received three of these, and again, once we complete three out of the seven rounds, that's when we get rid of one of these, and we'll have the other two that we'll keep until endgame scoring, and we'll hopefully try to score both of them. Each of these is hidden from our opponents, and they give us goals that we are working towards. For us, we have Close to Home, which would get us five spirit points at the end of the game if we have or we are tied for having the most spirit labels from the same region. We also have Monarch, which would get us six spirit points if we have or are tied for the most of the Europe spirit labels. And again, the labels that match your distiller do not count towards this goal. Finally, we have Photosynthesis that awards seven spirit points if we have or are tied for having the most non-vodka spirits that require plant sugars. It's because of goals like this that it's great to have these icons on these spirit tokens so we can easily see how we are doing. Now again, we don't have to get rid of one of these until we've completed two more rounds of play, but of course we should keep these in mind as we're making all of our decisions. Of course, at this point, we are entering the second round. Now, the other thing I want to point out over here is that there are seven rounds in this game, and once we complete seven rounds, that's when we'll move into final scoring. Now, I'll talk about final scoring in more detail later on. And the last thing we have to do before entering the next round is pass the starting player token clockwise. So that's going to head over here, which means the blue player will be the starting player in the next round of the game. So we're at the start of the second round, and of course, that means all start of round effects need to happen. Down here, the blue player's farmer is going to activate, and that's going to add a basic grain sugar ingredient to their pantry. So they can take some mixed grains and add those right now. Of course, those mixed grains don't cost money, but they can only purchase up to two things from the basic market in each market phase. And by using their farmer now, that gives them more flexibility to take other cards from the basic market later on. Next up, the yellow player's distiller effect will come into play. They can take a water or a yeast. And they're going to take a quick look at their pantry. They have a water and a yeast already. And they've decided to take a water. That's it for the start of round effects. So now it's time for the market phase. The blue player is going to start this off. They've decided to begin by buying turbo yeast. Now this is out at the premium market and it is going to cost them three of their money. And as you can see, this is yeast, but it also adds spirit points as well as money, unlike the basic yeast. Now, basic yeast would give a money back and it doesn't cost anything, but of course, having the most spirit points is how you win the game. And this also adds an additional alcohol into the spirit during the distill phase. 
After they take that, they can refresh the market. Oh, it looks like we have Mountain Spring Water. This costs three, and it is a water like we saw. It adds two money to a spirit. It also adds one spirit point, and it says if removed from the spirit stack during the distill phase, you add a basic water card to the spirit you just distilled. Now they can add this into their pantry or directly into their washback, and they know they're going to be using this in the current round, so they're just going to put it into the washback immediately. Blue is done, so now yellow can take a market turn. For their turn, they've decided to spend two of their money, and they're going to learn the soju recipe. That is bronze, which means it does cost the two money, and then they can place the bronze token right over here, and now they can distill soju for the rest of the game. That requires a metal barrel, it cannot be aged, and it cannot have any sugars except for grain, and it has to have at least two grain. It does gain one more spirit point than the cachaça that we made earlier. All right, yellow is done, so now we can go, and we have four money at our disposal. Now, we already have the recipe for cachaça, so we could try to make more cachaça. In fact, we get extra spirit points when we take another label that matches the same region, and we have that America's region already. We could, of course, work towards a different America's spirit. When we focus over here, gin and rum are both from the Americas. Gin cannot be aged, and it needs the metal barrel that we already have. And it also needs two or more fruit type sugars. And it is a silver recipe, which means we need to pay all four of our money just to learn it. Then we'd not have any money to get those fruit. I don't think that really makes sense. Now we have a yeast and an alcohol, which means we have everything except for sugars in order to distill. Remember, we could substitute alcohol for water or for yeast. And in this case, that could go down there. Of course, we don't have to put those down there just yet. And when I consider the fact that the basic fruits cost two money each, I don't think it makes sense to try and make a gin on this turn. Instead, let's make cachaça again. Uh, that is going to require at least one plant sugar. Although, unfortunately, right now there are no plant sugars out here on the premium market. There's a couple of the fruit sugars, but those are expensive at six and five each. They give quite a few spirit points, though. Now, with our four money, I think let's just go with mixed plants down here from the basic market. That does cost one, and that is all we need realistically to make that cachaça. Although, if we add more plant sugars, then we get to add more alcohol, and more alcohol means we'll make more money when we sell this spirit, and we can use that money to make better spirits in the future rounds. This is a basic ingredient, so we'll put this over here, and hopefully opponents will buy from here, and maybe we'll see some more of those plant-based ones come out before we run out of money. Okay, we are done, which means blue can go, and they currently have two money remaining. They've decided to spend both of those to buy this premium rice. That is a grain sugar, and they're going to put that right into their washback. After that, this market can be refreshed, and nice, there is another plant sugar. That's potatoes. It does cost three, but it also adds one to the sale value and to the spirit points. Blue is done, which means yellow can go, and currently they just have one money. After considering their options, they're just going to take mixed grains. That does not cost anything, and since it's a basic card, they'll put it to the side so they can track how many of those they've taken in this round. Their turn is done, which means it's come back to us, and we have three money, and those potatoes cost three money. I think this is going to be worth it to us. Let's go ahead and spend all of our money taking this, and we can add that directly into the washback. After that, we can refresh the premium market, and some wheat came out. Our turn is done, which means the blue player can go, and currently they don't have any money at all. They've decided to take some mixed grains. Those don't cost any money, and they can put those right here to show that is the first basic card they've taken in this round. After that, yellow can go. They have one money, and it looks like they're also going to go for mixed grains. There's been a lot of grain-based distilling happening so far in the game. Uh, after that, we are up. We have no money. And unfortunately, that means we don't have enough to take another mixed plants. I'd love to do that, but that costs one money. Now, currently, we have yeast and alcohol, so we have enough to actually make this distilling happen. And I think that leaves us somewhat flexible. And let's go ahead and take this yeast, because that will get us one money immediately when we purchase it. We can put that there. We now have one money, and now the blue player can go. They've decided to take yet another mixed grain. That's the second one they've taken in this round. And then the yellow player is going to pass. They have one money, and they've already taken two of these basic cards, so they can't take any more. That means it's over to us. 
we also have one money. We've also taken two of these cards, and there's nothing we can do with this one money. So we are going to pass, and then the blue player is going to pass as well. They have no money, and they've taken two basic cards. That means we can take these basic cards and put them into our pantry or our washback, and I think everyone is going to be putting them directly into their washback. After that, we have to do market cleanup, and in this three-player game, we discard one of each of the card types. We can see some new cards. This is a greenhouse. That's equipment. It costs four, and it says at the start of each round, you add a basic mixed plant card to your pantry. Now, those actually cost money, so that is a pretty good effect right there. And it also says at the end of the game, you gain one spirit point for every two American spirit labels that you currently have. There's also an ingredient that is going to be barley and a mason jar. This is interesting. When we focus in, the mason jar says when selling, you gain two money. And if you're selling moonshine, you gain four money instead. So it's a variable amount of money. And this is a really good way to get extra money if you happen to be distilling moonshine. It's pretty cheap too. All right, the market phase is over, so it's now time to distill. Once again, this happens simultaneously. But for this video, I'll show each player doing this in order. Let's go ahead and start with ourselves. We can put an alcohol down here and a second yeast up there if we want. The more yeast we have up here, the more likely we are to not lose a plant. And technically, we could lose both of these plants. And in that case, we'd be making moonshine. Um, that'd be bad. <laughs> I think we definitely want to dilute this so that is less likely to happen. If we made moonshine, it's not the end of the world for sure, because we'd then just try to make a cachaça in the next round. So we can now add alcohol, and again, we add one for every sugar in the washback. So we'll add two sugars, and then we will distill. So we're going to shuffle all of these up, and we are hoping to not pull both of our plant sugars. The first thing is a plant sugar. That's going to go into the pantry. That is the head, and then the tail is yeast. Okay, phew. <laughs> so that means this is the spirit that we just distilled, and now we have to add a barrel. We'll use this metal barrel here, and then we can look over here and see that we did indeed distill cachaça. We have at least one plant sugar in a metal barrel, and that is all that was required. So we can take another cachaça label. We can put that right over here, and that is us done. I do want to mention that even though this phase is simultaneous, if there are more players who want to take a label than there are labels in the supply, then we take them in turn order. Of course, while we are distilling, so is the blue player. Now they have a water and this turbo yeast, and then they've decided to add a couple more grains into this washback. They have a whopping five sugars in their washback, which means they will add five alcohol, and then they also have this turbo yeast. That says during the distill phase, they have to add an additional alcohol to the washback. So that is a sixth alcohol. This is going to be very alcoholic whiskey. Now they can distill by shuffling all of these together, and they are planning on making whiskey, and in fact, it's impossible for them to miss in this round. The reason for that is because the whiskey needs at least two grain, and they have five grain in here. So even if grain is in the head and the tail, they'll still have enough to create that whiskey. So let's see what they made. There is an alcohol at the head. Not too surprising considering how many alcohol cards are in here. And then there is a mixed grain. So that means this is their spirit. They have to add a barrel, and they're going to go with the X bourbon hogshead here. And then we can confirm they have indeed made whiskey because they're using this wooden barrel. And then they easily have at least two of the grain type of sugar. And they don't have any non-grain sugars in this spirit. So they can take a whiskey label. Blue is done, but now let's take a look at yellow. They put a water here. They added their signature corn over here. Then they have yeast and at this point, they don't actually have to add this alcohol or this water. They've decided to put the alcohol here, though. And then considering they are hoping to make soju, and that requires at least two grain, they've decided they are going to add another water to make it less likely that they fail at making the soju. Now they can add alcohol, and there are three sugars, so that is three alcohol that goes into the washback. So they can now collect these up and shuffle them. They are at a slight risk of failing to make soju, and in that case, they would make moonshine. This would only happen if that grain was in their head and their tail. So we can start with the head, and it's an alcohol, and then the tail, 
is another alcohol. So that means this is a less alcoholic drink than they were hoping for, but either way, they are indeed going to be making soju. They of course have to add a barrel and they will add a metal barrel that matches up for the soju. This cannot be aged. And again, they need to have at least two of the grain type sugars and none of the other types. And they have three of those grain type sugars. So they've successfully made soju, which means they can take one of those labels and place it onto that spirit. All right, we're all done distilling, so now we can move on to the selling phase. This will begin with the blue player, since they have the starting player token, but they are actually gonna pass. In fact, they are forced to pass. The reason for that is because this whiskey must be aged. We know that because of this aging icon here, and since it was just distilled on this round, it is not aged yet. So they will be aging this later on during this phase, but during this selling phase, they will pass. So play will move up to yellow and they are going to sell their soju. In fact, they must because they are not allowed to age it. Now, when they sell this soju, it looks like they are going to gain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven money for these icons up here. And there is no extra money down over there. So that is seven money for the spirit, which is definitely going to open up their options in the next market phase. Next up, they're going to gain spirit points. The soju has a base of five. And then their signature ingredient is in here. So that is going to get them four more, bringing them up to nine. Yellow was at five, so that's going to bring them up to 14. And I do want to mention that if you go past 50, you can then use this token that you put onto the board. And you can also flip it over again if you go past 100. Next up, they can claim one of these empty rewards. And they've decided to go for this one. That lets them learn one free recipe or gain two spirit points. And they're going to go for the recipe. Normally, these cost two, four, or six money for the bronze, silver, and gold recipes. And they've decided to go for gold. So that's effectively six money worth of benefit they're getting. And they're going to learn brandy. When we focus in, brandy gives a base of 13 spirit points when it's sold, but it does require a wooden barrel, and it must be aged at least one round, and it has to have at least two fruit sugars in it. They did consider the baijo. That needs three or more of the grain, and it uses a clay type of barrel. We can actually get clay and wooden barrels in the basic supply. The clay barrels are a little bit cheaper at three, and the wooden barrels cost four. And then, of course, there are premium versions of these that show up in the premium market. Now, the reason they went with the brandy instead of the baijo is they already have the recipe for soju, which needs two of the grain type of sugar. So they figure if they can get grains, they'll make soju. And if instead they can get fruits, they'll try to make some really lucrative brandy. They might not be able to pull this off in the next round, but they do have eight money, so it's possible they can make it happen. Actually, hold on, they forgot to add a bottle. Sorry about that. This bottle should have increased the money they gained by one. So they actually made eight money total, which means they have nine going into the next round. Now, at this point, they can return these things. The glass bottle and this metal barrel should go to their storeroom, and then the rest of these will go back to their associated piles. It is worth noting that they've used their signature ingredient, so that is going to be removed from the game. Well, yellow is done with their turn, so that means we can go, and we did distill cachaça, so we must sell that now. We, of course, need to add this bottle, and then when we get money, it looks like that is six money total showing up on all of these cards. There is no money over here for the cachaça. So we'll take six money, and that means we have seven, and then we can gain spirit points. This is a base of four, and then when we look at these cards, we have an additional one from these potatoes, so that brings us to five, but then on top of that, our master blender will activate. They say during the sell phase, we gain one spirit point when selling a spirit if you already have a spirit label from the same region. We are currently selling cachaça, and we have already sold some cachaça. So that will activate, getting us one additional spirit. So that is six spirit total, which is going to bring us from five up to 11. Not quite as good as the yellow player. They made more spirit and more money than us in this current round. Of course, they did that by using their signature ingredient, and we haven't used ours just yet. I'm sure we'll get to it at some point before the game is over. Speaking of that, now we can take one of these bonuses. And I think for this round, we'll go simple and just take five money. We had seven. So now we have 12, and that just increases our flexibility with the options that we have in the next market phase. Of course, we could have taken two spirit points instead, but at this moment in the game, I think getting the money is probably going to be better as we invest in our distillery. All right, we can now return all of these items from our spirit. 
And now we skip the blue player since they've passed already, then yellow passes, and then we pass because we don't have any more spirits to sell. That means the selling phase is over, and we can now move into the aging phase, and this starts with the blue player. Now, as I mentioned before, the blue player distilled whiskey, and whiskey must be aged at least one round. So they must age this whiskey, and the way this works is they're going to take the spirit, they're going to grab all of the cards and put them face down except for the barrel, and then they're going to put this with the label on top onto an empty spot in their warehouse. Now, if they did not have any empty spots and they had a spirit they must age, then they must have sold one of their spirits in their warehouse to open up a spot so that they could then age the new spirit. Next up, during the aging step, every spirit in the warehouse is going to gain a random flavor card. In order to do this, they draw the top card from this deck and they don't look at it. You're not allowed to figure out what kind of flavor was added to that spirit until you sell it. Now, if we take a look at this deck, there's a ton of different flavor options. We have caramel, we have seaweed, salty, old cellar, Piney. There's just a ton of variety in here, and as you can see in the top left, there are a variety of different payouts. We can see that this orange peel has a plus two to the money, this caramel is plus three, or as manure, <laughs> that's going to be zero. Now, you may have noticed that there are no spirit points on these cards, and that's because you get spirit points differently for these flavors when you sell. I'll explain how that works very soon, but for now, the blue player is going to take the top flavor card from this deck and they are going to add that face down to the bottom of this spirit. Now, at any time, they're allowed to look at all of the cards in this spirit, except for the flavor card, which must remain hidden until this is sold. Now, they add one random flavor to each of the spirits that they're aging, although in this case, blue gets to add another one because of the special effect on their ex-bourbon hogshead wooden barrel. When we focus in, it says when aging for the first time, add an additional flavor card. So this one begins with two flavors instead of one. Of course, this extra flavor thematically coming from the bourbon that was distilled in here before. Now, once again, during the aging phase, we're going to add one of these flavors to every single thing that's aging. So that means if you age something for five rounds, you're going to put five flavors underneath it. Now, these are going to stay in your warehouse until you choose to sell them during a selling step. And when you sell these, it follows the normal procedure with one extra aspect and that has to do with a spirit bonus based off of the number of flavors that are in that spirit. As you can see, you will get one extra spirit point if there is one flavor, three spirit points for two, then six points for three, 10 points for four, and a whopping 15 extra spirit points if this has five flavor cards. Remember, there is variability from one card to the next in terms of the money payout, but every card counts towards these spirit bonuses. So, as you can see, it really pays off to age these spirits, but of course, you're not selling it, and that means in this round, the blue player has gained no money, since obviously they aged the only spirit that they distilled. Well, blue is done aging their spirits, and it looks like nobody else has invested in an aging infrastructure yet with those barrels, and of course, the recipes required to actually do the aging. So, that means we are done with the aging phase, and we can now move on to the end of round phase. The first thing we do is check all of the spirit awards, and nobody has achieved any of these just yet. The yellow player got 9 spirit points for the spirit they sold, not the 12 that they needed to get the high class award. Nobody completed any of these other ones. And now, the blue player has the option of holding a tasting. Remember, you can only do this if you sold no spirits during the current round. And blue aged their whiskey that they distilled, they did not sell any. So that means they have the option of giving up one to four spirit points to gain the same amount of money, and they only have one spirit point. So they could spend that to gain one money right now, but they don't think one money is going to really change things too much for them. The next round is going to be a little bit lean for them, and they're okay with that, so they're not going to hold a tasting. Next up, we can move the round token forward to the three spot. And then finally, the starting player token is going to move clockwise, and that means the yellow player will be the starting player in the next round of the game. Well, at this point, we are ready for the third round of the game, but I think I am now going to stop playing through the game and instead discuss how final scoring works. Once again, the game will be played until we've completed seven full rounds, and of course, when we move from the third to fourth round, every player will simultaneously discard one of their three distillery goals without showing it to their opponents. Once the seventh round is completed, the game will be over and we can then move into final scoring. Now, at this point, we can gain extra spirit points for a variety of different things. 
The first of these involves spirits that are currently aging in the warehouse of a player when the game is over. Now, I do want to mention that you are allowed to distill a spirit that requires aging in the seventh round of the game. Obviously, you'd be forced to put it into an empty spot in your warehouse, and you won't have an opportunity to sell it, but you will liquidate these for spirit points during final scoring, and we'll talk about that right now. Now, the first thing that you do is flip this over, and you will gain a single point for every flavor card associated with that spirit. In this example, that is Skunky and Chocolate. And if they were to sell this earlier on, two of these flavor cards means they'd get three spirit points. But again, during final scoring, you just get one spirit point for each of these. So it's certainly a lot better to sell these with a bunch of flavors before the game actually ends. Now, you also gain spirit points for the cards that you have in the spirit, as well as the recipe over here. But I do want to point out, you do not gain money because you did not actually sell this spirit. So you would not get the three money for the chocolatey flavor here, and you would also not get all this money that shows up on the cards in the spirit. In addition to that, even though you have this token, you are not allowed to claim any bonuses during final scoring. Next up, players will score spirit points for their bottle collection. Remember, you're able to add bottles to your collection whenever you sell them, and they have a region icon on them. You put those off to the side, and then you will gain spirit points based off of those regions. If you have two of the same region in your collection, you'll get two spirit points. If you have three, it goes to four. Four regions is seven points, five regions is 10, and if you have six or more bottles from the same region, you get a whopping 15 spirit points. In addition to this, if you have at least one bottle from all three different regions, you'll gain five points, but that only happens once. After this, players will gain spirit points for the upgrades they currently have in their distillery. For example, we have this master blender, and again, that says at the end of the game, it will get us two spirit points for every two identical spirit labels. We have two of these Kashasa labels, so that is already worth two extra spirit points to us at the end of the game. Some of these are conditional like that, and others just give you a fixed amount of spirit points like this coffee still right here, which gets you one spirit point if it's in your distillery at the end of the game. After this, we will then score these distillery goals. Of course, at this moment, everyone will only have two, not three. We discard one of these just before we enter the fourth round of the game. Everyone will reveal the two that they have and potentially score those spirit points if they meet the listed criteria, and each of these cards only applies to the player who has that card. Finally, players can gain spirit points for their excess money. Every five money they have will turn into one point, so that means if we ended the game with 12 money, we would gain two more spirit points. After gaining points for all of these conditions, the player with the most spirit points will be the winner, and they will gain the title of Master Distiller. Now, if there is a tie for the most points at the end of the game, then the tied player who has the most money remaining is going to win the game, and if there is still a tie, then the tied players share in the victory. Well, at this point, I've taught just about all of the rules to the game, so that's going to bring this tutorial to a close. I hope you enjoyed learning how to play Distilled. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.